Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Cleveland Heights City Council meeting of January 16th. It is 7.32, and we're ready to go. I'm going to call the roll. Maddox? Here. Boyd is uh, home with a sick child, but watching on YouTube. Uh, Russell? Here. Kuda is here. Cobb? Present. Larson? Here. Petrus? Here. All right. So we're all here. Um, and also I want to say get well, Addie, our clerk of council is sick today. So we got, we got two people pinch hitting. Um, so let's see, um, amendments to the agenda. Uh, I would like to add new business and old business to, uh, let's see, to committee reports. Um, Mr. Law Director, am I doing that correctly? Making a motion to... Right, yes. So I, uh, do I uh, have a motion to add uh, new business and old business to the agenda? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, very good. Um, again, I wanna remind people if, you're, if you wanna sign up to speak, the forms are over there. Um, okay, so we will now um, move for approval of the minutes. Uh, anybody have any concerns for the minutes for December 4th? Hearing none, um, I'll move on to communications from the mayor. The mayor actually is not here, but our city administrator, Danny Williams, is. Thank you, Mr. President, members of council. Yes, I am not uh, Mayor Saron. Uh, the mayor is uh, currently at uh, meet the winter meeting of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, uh, the purpose of which is to engage with uh, the White House current administration and Congress and to share, discuss prior priorities for America's uh, mayors. He'll likely come back with some, you know, some great insights to share from this opportunity to, to uh, hobnob with some of our sister cities, so. But on the mayor's behalf, I just want to thank, uh, first of all, Council President for, uh, Kuda for scheduling time at the uh, February 20th meeting of the Committee of the Whole for a presentation by the Western Reserve Land Conservancy about an upcoming property survey that uh, we're engaging in along with the cities of Euclid and South Euclid. In brief summary, th this will be a street survey of every property in the city to establish baseline ratings of our properties to better inform the types of interventions, programs, and services that we should employ to preserve and improve these assets. Uh, we're currently hiring emergency, excuse me, temporary workers to conduct the survey, which should begin in uh, early February and take three to six months to complete. And upon completion, we anticipate presenting the findings and analysis to council and, and to begin considering our options for implementing any recommendations. Second initiative for which we're seeking uh, to pin down a date right now with uh, for a presentation uh, to the committee of the whole is a, a, the launch of a compensation study as we all by the Archer Company. As we all know, we've had some challenges in completing some of our basic services because of difficulty hiring the appropriate staffing. Uh, for this, and, and part of the reason for that may be because we're not competitive. Uh, and so the, the goal of this uh, survey is to, to determine if our compensation and benefits structure is fair and competitive with our, our um, neighboring communities. We anticipate launching this uh, survey in early February and completion of the project again within three to six months. If I could just segue to the community, uh, to the uh, administrator's report, uh, this, uh, there was a notice about this um, recently, but tomorrow uh, at 6 p.m. at the community center, we'll be hosting a, a meeting to gather community input about several options under consideration for Cumberland Pool. Uh, this is an important asset. Just to be clear, we do not anticipate any interruptions in the use of this, this uh, pool, but we wanna take into account several options to preserve and, and enhance uh, the, uh, the, the pool. Uh, we, we've got some repairs that'll need to be made during the season, but we don't anticipate interruption of service. And then finally, at the beginning of my tenure, I believe uh, Council President Kuda asked me a question I wasn't prepared to answer, and that was when the council could expect to hear the, or receive the um, periodic written reports called for in the charter from the city administrator. 
Uh, now that I've had a chance to kind of observe and feel the rhythm of the city's business, I'm in a better position to answer that question. So uh, my anticipation is that um, by mid-year, probably in June, uh, you'll get the first uh, report. And then by end of the year, probably in December, the, these dates may slip forward or back a little bit, depending on circumstances. But And I anticipate leading up to those reports, I'll consult with council to make sure that the information included uh, is sufficient to, to satisfy council and to help help you in the, the formation of any legislation that you, th you deem appropriate. So that would be my report. All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. That uh, We look forward to that. Uh, moving on, any city departmental reports? I think we kind of had one already. Um, report from the clerk, uh, Clerk Larson. No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. Um, but our clerk, again, is out ill today. Uh, public comment. Okay, so uh, I think, I believe we have two. Um, you have three minutes. Uh, Councilwoman Russell has, Council, Vice President Russell has kindly um, agreed to be our timer, our timekeeper. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Councilman Maddox oh, is gonna do the Council timer. So there we go. Closer to it. <laughs> Even better. He's got the, he's got the little box. Right, right. Okay, so are there uh, any comments uh, on agenda items? No, there are not. Okay, then we'll move to public comment general. Uh, C.J. Nash. Hello, C.J. Nash, Cleveland Heights resident. I just want to thank whoever it was, and I believe you said it was uh, the a combination of which ones? Public Works Director and uh, Mike Thomas, Communications Director. Okay, yeah, to congr congratulate them and tell them thank you, thank you, thank you. I got the wonderful calendar in the mail, and that may sound kind of funny, me thanking you for, for a calendar, but to me, it really answers a lot of questions I've had for a lot of years where I'm like, well, when is this and when is that? It's done very well. There's nothing frivolous on it. It's really good information, and it went straight on my fridge. So thank you very much much. They did a really good job, and I hope we keep sending that out every year because it's super helpful. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Graham Ball. Good evening, Council President Kuda, Council members, City Administrator Williams. Um, I am here today to ask you to bring forward the resolution for a ceasefire that was sent to you by former Council President Hart. Um, you have already heard at the last Council meeting how deeply this issue is affecting our community. You passed a resolution very quickly in October when Israel was attacked, and yet you have been silent for more than 100 days uh, while Israel has used your political cover to kill tens of thousands of innocents and forcibly displace and starve millions of people. You spoke up then, and therefore you have an obligation to speak up now. You have several drafts of a ceasefire resolution in your email inbox. Um, I would implore you to choose one that specifically mentions a ceasefire. I'm really very disappointed that this ceasefire resolution is not on the agenda today. I know you're all dealing with many important issues and that this is you know, the first council session of the year, um, but I really cannot think of anything that is more important right now than what's happening in Gaza. I'd like to share with you some words from Rafat Alawir, uh, who is a poet and creative writing professor uh, from Gaza. Last month, on the morning of the day that he was killed in an Israeli airstrike, he sent his last tweet, which read, the Democratic Party and Biden are responsible for the Gaza genocide perpetrated by Israel. You must propose a ceasefire resolution or you must reckon with your complicity. I would now like to read one of his final poems, If I Must Die by Rafat Alawir. If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings, make it white with a long tail, so that a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze and bid no one farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself, sees the kite, my kite you made, flying up above, 
and thinks for a moment an angel is there bringing back love. If I must die, let it be, let it bring hope. Let it be a story. I still believe that you on this council will stand with the right side of history and pass the ceasefire resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Betsy Sweet. President Kuda, Vice President Russell, City Council. Um, I grew up in Cleveland Heights. Uh, it's very important to me. I went to Fairfax, Roxborough, Cleveland Heights High School. Um, came back after being away many years because I love this city and I wanted to come back and have my, my boys come. We bought houses. My boys own Boss Dog Brewery. So we're very invested in this town and we care a lot about it. Um, having said that, we're very upset because there is no police presence in Cleveland Heights. I go to University Heights, I go to Beechwood, I go to Shaker, I see patrols. The only time I see police are when they're stopping somebody for a ticket. Um, we had a manager behind the brewery get beat up and they stole our keys. We called the city, they said they would have police presence there. Nobody ever came. There's no police to go back there. The parking garage is a mess. This was before construction. It was bad then, it's bad now. Um, so I don't know if, what's going on with the lights. You go in there, the lights don't come on until you walk on, you know, you're near your car, then the lights go on. I don't know if the elevator's working. It's not safe and people don't feel safe, so they're not coming around. And it's making it even harder for the businesses in the area. Um, there is a parking alley for Boss Dog, Rudy's, and the Meraki Cocktail Lounge. Everything was fine until the Meraki Cocktail Lounge opened up and their cars are blocking everybody in and we are trying to talk to them and when we approach them, they're very confrontational. We're saying, we don't want to call the police to get your car, tell us we don't want to do this and they're like, go ahead, call the police, we'll take care of them. It's going to be bad. Something bad is going to happen back there. And my boys own this restaurant, and I care about our employees. I don't want anything bad to happen. I want the city to be proactive, not reactive. And I've heard from several people that we don't want to have a big police presence in Cleveland Heights. Well, it's not working. It's not working. Bad things are happening. We built this development. We want to fill it with people. We don't want people to be scared of Cleveland Heights. We don't want them worried. Uh, we just, I, I don't know how we're going to do it. I really don't know how we're going to bring people here when they don't feel safe. And right now, we don't feel safe. And we never hear from the police. Meckleberg was out there, Chief Meckleberg. She was you know, always talking to everybody. We had beat cops. We don't have them anymore. They were great. We don't have anything. We're not feeling safe. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sweet. Uh, is that it for the comments? I believe, okay. All right. Um, then we'll move on to legislation. The legislation that we're first gonna be talking about is for consideration for adoption tonight on first reading. And I'll turn that over to Councilwoman Larson. Resolution number 001-2024, first reading, as Councilor Kuda, Kuda stated, for consideration. A resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an extension of an agreement with Millennium Strategies, LLC, for continued grant writing services and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure. Introduced by Mayor Saron. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, the motion passes. Uh, next resolution, please. Resolution number 002-2024, 
a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Bell Equipment Company through the SourceWell Cooperative Purchasing Program for the acquisition of one front load auto car refuse collection vehicle and one rear load refuse collection vehicle for the division of refuse collection for the Department of Public Works, providing compensation therefore, and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure introduced by Mayor Saren. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I mean, I'd like to say that this is fantastic that we're finally getting the equipment we need um, to do the work we need to do, especially for um, bulk um, bulk uh, collection. So this is big step in the right direction. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Resolution number 003-2024, a resolution supporting and authorizing the mayor to submit an application to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, USDA Forest Service, Ohio's Urban Forestry Grant Program for a grant under the program and to accept funding if awarded and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure. Introduced by Mayor Saren. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Oh, just hold on for a second, please. <laughs> okay. Resolution number 004-2024, first reading. A resolution reappointing David Benson, Canterbury, Laura Black, Coventry, Susan Ephraimson, Milliken, Jonathan Goldman, Taylor, Gretchen Mettler, Caledonia, Jessica Shantz, Shantz, Fairfax, Patty Substelny, Roxborough, Elizabeth Vanderleest, Oxford, Leslie Jones, Noble, Darlene White Boulevard, Cindy Carol Pankhurst, Anthony Boremski, Amanda Isaacson, Aloysius Snodgrass, Lisa Alt Gilbert, Justin Alcorn, Sue Dean Dyke, and Angela Bennett as members of the Citizens Advisory Committee Commission of the City of Cleveland Heights, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure. Introduced President Kuda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All right, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Resolution number 005-2024, a resolution reappointing Liza Wolf as a member of the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure. Uh, so moved. Second. And we, have, we do have a second? I'm sorry. Okay, great. And is there any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Resolution number 006-2024. AA, AA resolution reappointing Denver Brooker as a member of the Architectural Board of Review of the City of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, and elevating Catherine Lex, Lester, parenthesis, currently an alternate member, unparenthesis, to full member of the Architectural Board of Review of the City of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, to fill a current vacancy, and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in, f yes, Councilman. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. Resolution number 010-2024, resolution authorizing the mayor to apply for, accept, and enter into a water pollution control loan fund, acronym is WPGPCLF, agreement on behalf of the City of Cleveland Heights with the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency for planning, design, and or construction of wastewater facilities, designated a dedicated repayment source for the loan and declaring the necessity that the legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure. Introduced by Mayor Saren. So moved. Second. Do we have a second? Second. second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Motion passes. We'll now go to second readings. Um, 
<clears throat> let me ask the law director. So do we need to amend 187 and 188 or just 187? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Uh, each piece has uh, an updated exhibit that is labeled um, as recommended by staff 116 2024. It's the exhibit A. And can we amend them both at the same time or obviously separately, huh? I would do them separately yeah. since there's only two. Right. Okay, so um, I'm going to make a motion to amend. By substituting um, the exhibit A that is labeled as recommended by staff 116 2024. By substituting exhibit A? Yes. Um, for ordinance number 187 2023. 20 That's a. Yeah, is that sufficient? Yeah, again, these are second readings, so these are from, some of these are from last year. So moved. There we go. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All in favor of amending this? Or is there any discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, that passes. And now we vote on the ordinance. Um, <clears throat> do I have a... A motion to adopt this amendment. I'm sorry, not the amendment, but the ordinance 187. I make, a, I make a motion that we adopt ordinance number 187 2023, an ordinance introducing amendments to various sections of Part 11 zoning code of the codified ordinances of the City of Cleveland Heights to update the city's mixed use regulations as contained in the C2X multiple, mul excuse me, multiple use zoning district and transmitting the same to the Planning Commission. Introduced by Mayor Sear. Thank you. I have a second? Second. All right, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. 188, um, please, uh, Mr. Law Director, tell me how I amend this one. You're going to, uh, Mr. President, make a motion to amend by substituting Exhibit A labeled Recommended 116 2024. Okay, I am moving to. Uh, Substitute Exhibit A for in Resolution 188-2023. Um, do I have a second? So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The amendment passes. Um, go ahead, um, Councilwoman Larson, and read the ordinance. 188. Okay. Ordinance number 188-2023, an ordinance amending the zoning map of the City of Cleveland Heights to rezone the parcels along South Taylor Road generally from Euclid Heights Boulevard south, the Cedar Brook Road, and transmitting the same to the Planning Commission. Introduced by Mayor Saren. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, the next ordinance does need to be amended, I believe. Councilwoman Larson. Same situation here. We have two ordinances that need to be amend amended. So will you please help me with the wording, Director Hanna? Certainly. So uh, in this case, you're going to make a motion to amend uh, ordinance number 196, 2023, by substituting uh, the Exhibit A to the ordinance that is attached to the legislation in Council's packet this evening for the prior one. And if you want to just say, uh, so moved, uh, you can incorporate that. Okay, so I've got a motion. I'm sorry. I want to make sure I get this worded correctly. Motion to, motion to amend 196-2023 by substituting Exhibit A. As attached to the legislation that is in Council's packet for tonight. For one. For 116. Do I, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on the amendment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The amendment passes. Now you can read the uh, um, number 196. Thank you. An ordinance repealing Chapter 150, Transportation and Environmental Sustainability Committee of Part 1, Administrative Code of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Cleveland Heights and Adopting Replacement Chapter 150, Transportation and Mobility Committee, introduced by Councilmember Cobb. So moved. Second. Any discussion? 
I don't see none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, law Director, uh, for 197, please. It's the same, isn't it? Oh, is it the same? be the same, correct. Motion to amend 197 resolution, excuse me, ordinance 197 2023 by substituting Exhibit A as attached to Council's packet for January 16th, 2024. So moved. I'll move. Okay, we have a move and a second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, now let's do the ordinance itself. Thank you. Ordinance number 197-2023, an ordinance enacting and adopting a new chapter 140, Cleveland Heights Climate and Environmental Sustainability Committee of Part 1, Administrative Code of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Cleveland Heights, also introduced by Councilmember Cobb. So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? It seems like somebody should say something about this new committee. Uh, <laughs> there you go. There's a prompt. You go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Well, the hardest. Um, so what we've essentially done with these two pieces of legislation is we have uh, split what was uh, previously our Transportation and Environmental Sustainability Committee into two different committees. Uh, one focused on mobility and transportation and the other focused on climate and sustainability. Um, we've done this. Um, to better utilize uh, the services of the people that have uh, been on these committees um, that have had different focuses on, on what they would like um, their own interests to be. And also to utilize the services of the uh, city administrator for the Transportation and Mobility Committee and the services of the city's uh, climate and sustainability uh, person, which we did not have previously. So I, I think... Uh, I believe all of council as well as the people that were previously serving on the Transportation and Environmental Sustainability Committee are looking forward to these changes uh, and uh, hopeful that these committees will be able to do a better job um, and will have the tools that they need to um, be of great assistance to the city and the administration. Thank you, Councilman. Any other, anybody else want to say anything? Okay. All right, so do we have a motion to adopt this? So moved. And a second? All right, very good. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Now we have the consent agenda. These are three resolutions that uh, Councilwoman Larson's gonna read together. Uh, do we need to suspend the rules here? All right, I'm getting the hang of it. Thank you. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> Ready? Go ahead. All right, thank you. Resolution number 007-2024, a resolution proclaiming February 14th, 2024 as National Donor Day and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure introduced by President Kuda. Resolution number 008-2024, a resolution recognizing February 2024 as Black History Month and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure introduced by Mayor Sarin. Resolution number 009-2024, a resolution proclaiming February 2024 to be American Heart Month and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure introduced by President Kuda. All right, do I have a motion to suspend the rules? So moved. Second. Second. I do have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> okay. Um, then I'd like to move that we adopt all three of these resolutions. So moved. Or second. All right. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motions pass. And now we're to committee reports. Um, <clears throat> you know what, let me do this. Since this is uh, a new council 
president and vice president. Um, we did assign uh, committee, uh, we did committee assignments actually in committee of the whole, but I'll read them. Um, and then if anybody has a report, by all means. Um, so the first, whenever I read a committee, the first person's the chair, the second person's the vice chair, and the third person is a member. So planning is Russell, Cobb, and Cuda. Parks and Rec is Maddox, Russell, Petrus. Safety and Health is Boyd, Larson, Cobb. Housing is Petrus, Larson, Maddox. Finance is Larson, Maddox, Boyd. Administrative Services is Cobb, Petrus, Cuda. Municipal Services is Larson, Boyd, and Russell. Uh, does anybody have a committee report? I do. Larson, Councilwoman Larson. Thank you. In regards to the legislation we passed this evening, so we have two new committees. I'd like to encourage citizens to take advantage of applying for this process to get engaged with what we're doing in the city. Some important things are going to be happening with transportation and mobility and also with cl climate and, ex and environmental sustainability. On the transportation and mobility um, committee, we have five members of the previous Transportation Environmental Sustainability Committee who are going to stay on transportation and mobility. So we need two new members for that committee. And then for climate and environmental sustainability, we have two members of the previous committee who will stay, but we need five members to complete that membership. So um, please consider applying to either of these citizen committees. And your engagement on these issues is really important. So I, I hope that we get, we're inundated with applications. Thank you. President Kuda. Uh, I just want to reiterate uh, with um, uh, Mr. Williams uh, had uh, talked about far as the pool engagement, which is tomorrow at uh, the community center at seven o'clock. Please make sure you're there to see the exhibit. I mean, six o'clock to make sure you see the exhibits, um, the parks and rec um, advisory board, along with the city has done a lot of work to see what is what to give you input on what's going on with the pool. Also, I wanted to let you know that uh, the free first day and CPR classes are still going on within the city uh, with different uh, organizations. January 24th will be the Benjamin Rose free uh, first date and CPR at one o'clock. If you are interested in taking the free first aid CPR class, please contact Bonnie Paul. Her number is 216. 538-3998. That's free, 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 free. First aid and CPR. So some people in the in our community may need it for, for their job and you may have to pay for it, but this way you don't have to pay for it. Some people want to do it with their children. The library is also doing it for people who are babysitting. So please take advantage of those uh, opportunities to have free first aid CPR classes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, now we move on to old business, old business, new business. I know we discussed this already in committee to hold, but just talking about the legislation in terms of what was submitted from the former uh, president to council, I'm not quite sure what version we were taking a look at, but I wanted to see if that was going to end up on the agenda so we could discuss the resolution um, for Gaza, for Palestine, and really address some of the remarks that we've been getting from residents. Well, I would like to speak to all of you about that. Uh, so why don't we make that a point to to talk on the phone, uh, if that's okay with everybody? Because I'm, you know, we're not really uh, have to do it. it uh, let me ask the law director if I'm just trying to gauge uh, where everybody's at and not actually discuss what we're going to do. Uh, can can we? How can we do that, I guess? Theoretically, uh, a, a, an offline conversation between you and a council person could happen. Um, I would recommend against it, uh, particularly in this case, because it's going to be hard to resist the temptation to say, well, I know that council person X is thinking this. Uh, does that make sense to you? Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're in an in a, in a unnoticed, unlawful meeting. Okay. 
So what about what uh, Vice President Russell just said? If, if uh, our clerk was to send out uh, something uh, trying to gauge the interest in doing a resolution or uh, making some kind of comment, could we do it through her and get the comments that way? And what would you do with the comments? We would make a decision about putting it on the agenda. I, um, so respectfully, Council President, I think you can make the decision about putting it on the agenda. And if Council disagrees with you, they can they can vote to remove it. Um, uh, or if you determine not to put it on, they can vote to put it on. Um, and then you can have a conversation about a proposed resolution or measure um, in Committee of the Whole and then Council. Sure. Mr. President, and, and, yes. and just... To make my stance clear, I think this is something that we should be discussing fully in public in a committee of the whole at a very minimum. Um, I, I think that the public deserves to hear the full conversation that we're having on this topic. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I mean, ultimately, that's what I want to see happen. Uh, so we'll put it on for committee of the whole at the next, uh, that would be uh, February 5th. And, uh, you know, we'll discuss it at that time. Uh, any other where are we, old business or new business? New business. Any other new business? No. Okay. Then uh, council president's report. I wrote it on this little scrap paper so it wouldn't be long. Um, so uh, Vice President Russell and I had, uh, this is the team, the new team. We had quite a, a couple of weeks. Um, we worked really hard to get the packets out on a Wednesday. That may not mean a lot to you, but it means a lot to us because we've been getting packets on Friday and uh, with the help of our law director and our, law and our uh, uh, clerk of counsel, we were able to do that. And that gives us a couple extra days to discuss, I'm not, I mean, to read over the, the packet, the, all the information, it's uh, you know, probably 150 pages if I had to guess. Um, and, you know, ask questions. If we need to fire off questions to the administration, we had that time. We also worked out these uh, purpose statements that we discussed in, um, in Committee of the Whole. Now every piece of legislation has a cover sheet that says what the purpose of the legislation is. So you don't, so before, when you're reading the legislation, now you know what it's about. Instead of just diving into legalese right away, you know what it's about. So when you're reading, the legalese, you have a place to put that because you know exactly what the legislation does. So we, we were able to accomplish that. Um, we met with the mayor. We met with almost all the council members. Um, we did committee assignments and um, we still have a lot of stuff on our to-do list, um, but uh, I feel like we got off to a pretty good start. Um, it's it's really interesting to you know have all these um, responsibilities and you know do it for real instead of watching somebody else do it. And um, I think I, I council uh, Vice President Russell and I work very well together. Um, our meeting with the mayor was very productive. Um, we would have met with him this week if he wasn't out of town, but we did set a meeting schedule to meet every week. So that was a, a great accomplishment there. I just will end with uh, saying uh, about Martin, Martin Luther King Day being yesterday. Um, I saw several things on television yesterday. The one I really loved was, um, I think it was called I Am Martin Luther King. Did anybody happen to see that one on television yesterday? It was a really wonderful um, documentary. I just heard so many profound statements yesterday. Um, Shaquille O'Neal uh, was saying how far we've come and yet he can't feel good about this because of how much violence there is. Um, I, uh, LeBron James made some very profound statements. Andrew Young, um, civil rights leader. Uh, there were recordings of John Lewis on television, Van Jones, uh, weighed in a lot on this particular documentary that I watched. Um, somebody said to Charles Barkley, this is a really somber day. And he really took exception to that because he celebrates this every year and all the accomplishments. And um, he made some uh, very profound statements as well. Um, 
One thing I found, and I'm not even sure who this civil rights leader was, but he was talking about the the moment in Memphis where um, Martin Luther King was exhausted and he wasn't even going to give a speech that night. Um, but he felt like he really needed to do that because um, he owed it to the people that showed up. He actually asked Reverend Ralph, Ralph uh, Abernathy to speak. And then he just to kind of at the last minute just um, gathered uh, the stamina to, to get up there and, you know, talk about going to the mountaintop and I may not get there with you. I mean, just realizing his own mortality in that moment. Um, and one of the things that one of the civil rights leaders talked about was that Martin Luther King became very troubled by a lot of the things that happened. And just to show you the strain this man was under, um, somebody had suggested to him that he see a therapist. And uh, the, he discussed it with a couple of people and they said, there is no way you should do this because the FBI director, J. Edgar Hoover, was so corrupt and reportedly a racist um, that if, if there was any chance that he would do this, there is no doubt that the FBI would have gotten to this person and somehow you know, exposed everything that would, you know, ordinarily be in a, uh, you know, a private conversation in a, like a, like a doctor patient relationship. So that's the, I mean, just, you know, you can't imagine the kind of strain. All I could tell you is that when I was a kid, every time he came on television and spoke to the nation, I was moved. I was just so profoundly moved to hear the truth and a, a real leader that just transcended everything, um, race, you know, religion, economic status. And uh, we were just so lucky to have him. His legacy certainly lives on. I hope that we all were able to, in some way, celebrate yesterday. Um, so I'll give my little tagline here. Um, I think that brings our business to a close. May I have a motion to adjourn? All right, second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, any opposed? This meeting is adjourned.